Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Up next, we'll see Jared Goff and the NFC champion Los Angeles Rams as they match up with Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. With that, let's get you out to Silicon Valley, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara as we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. It was a common sight in the 80s and 90s, not quite as frequent since, but it's back. Playoff football in the Bay Area here at Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. A few short moments ago, these two teams made their way out of the Levi's Stadium tunnels, and the noise level in this place was deafening. They're set for football as the 49ers get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis on hand. And, Charles, we've got two NFC West teams here. Your assessment of the state of the division coming into 2019, is it the Rams to lose? We saw the changing of the guard with the Rams taking over from Seattle a couple of seasons ago. But Seattle got back in the game pretty fast, didn't they? You remember preseason last year? It was doom and gloom. They ended up in the playoffs. Arizona, they're kind of hitting the reset button. It's San Francisco to keep your eye on with good health, good drafts, they could be the team that can really contend. Greg Zerline now. He'll handle the honors to get us started. And we are underway from Santa Clara. This is taken at his four. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out comes Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. Jimmy G led them to a 48-46 thrilling victory in New Orleans in week 14. Charles, you were there. And Garoppolo, 349 and four touchdowns. And what I liked about the game and how they approached it with him, and all teams say the same thing when they play the 49ers. Let's slow down a running game and make Garoppolo beat us. Well, the 49ers attacked with him right out of the gate, letting him throw the football before they got to the running game. And boy, did he respond and in a big way. And how about the signature drive at the end to lead them to victory? That big fourth and two to George Kittle that set up Robbie Gold's game-winning field goal. Quite a season. You know, people tell me all the time that I look like him, and I don't see it, but it's a big compliment to him, isn't it? It is, and if I were you, I would go with it each and every time. You'll get the best tables in San Francisco for dinner. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. You can't block me. You can't block me. Play fake there to Coleman. Now Garoppolo. And this is Selleck here with a grab. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating... The guys who just gave up that play. Here we go, now here they we go. face a second and long following the holding penalty. Working from the gun, Garoppolo. He finds McKinnon, complete. That's a combination that 49er fans are happy to see. Garoppolo to McKinnon, and they want to see a lot of it. They didn't get to witness it at all last year. Remember, McKinnon got injured before the season began. But you think back to his final year in Minnesota in 2017, had almost 1,000 yards of total offense. A lot of those on the receiving end of things. He is definitely a weapon out of the backfield like we just saw. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards there and a Niner first. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yeah. thought he was trying to get deep. Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, it's Garoppolo. And he finds his target, it's Marquise Goodwin. 
And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 18 yards, first down Niners. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Here we go, here we go. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Cut. On play action, now Garoppolo going for the deep ball. And that'll wind up incomplete. Trying to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. Clay Matthews is an absolute force. Multiple Pro Bowls as an outside linebacker. He can swing inside and create the same havoc. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Let's go, Heavy. Let's go, Heavy. Heavy, what you got? What you got, Heavy? Hey, Give me some. Hey, on second down, it's Coleman. He gets away from one. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. Here we go, here we go. And it looks go. like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. And that's when it's fun to play defense, when you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play. That's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. On now is the 27-year-old rookie, Mitch Wisnowski, to punt. JoJo Natson back deep for the Rams. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So now the Rams will get their first opportunity with a football. They'll be led by their quarterback, Jared Goff. He grew up just across the Golden Gate Bridge in Marin County. Nothing like being back at home, even if you are on the visiting team, right? You have some familiar faces in the stands, probably got a chance to visit with some people beforehand, maybe a little bit afterwards, but bottom line, he's there to do a job. He's there to try and win a football game. But he's from Novato, yeah. all right, California, which is the same hometown, ironically enough, of Chargers head coach Mike McCoy and one of our producers in the truck. Ed Brady. Big Ed Brady. <laughs> On first down, gone. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. Fights him off. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So many questions about Todd Gurley in the offseason. How good is the knee? I mean, remember, he had a heavy workload the last couple years, nearly 4,000 yards from scrimmage, 40 total touchdowns, but just four carries in the NFC Championship game, 10 in the Super Bowl. So we'll see what kind of usage he gets this season. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble 
from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Out come the 49ers again here for their next drive on offense. And San Francisco, as we said, got the win over New Orleans week 14. That moved what a them. game. What a game. You said, did you tell me that was maybe the best game you've ever called at the NFL level? I Well, there's no doubt in my mind at the NFL level. There was a couple college games that were pretty good, that uh, Boise State, Oklahoma, and Appalachian State, Michigan. But as far as an overall game, number one on my list. And speaking of number one, the victory moved them back into the number one spot in the NFC by virtue of their win in New Orleans and the Seahawks losing to the Rams in L.A. on Sunday night. And what did you tell me? That 11-2 start is their best start since when? 1997. And not only that, for a West Coast team that has to play some East Coast games, they're 6-1 and one on the road now. So give them a ton of credit conquering that time zone jinx that many teams have. This is a good football team. And they're looking ahead to the rest of the season and week 17 in particular when they go to Seattle maybe to settle the NFC West title and one more nugget those 11 wins that's more than the 49ers came up with during the first two years of the Shanahan Lynch era Coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. Open man is Pettis. It's complete. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. Here we go, here we go. All day. Throwing on first is Garoppolo. Looking to complete it to Pettis, and he's got him. A gain of six there on first. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Throwing again on second down. Garoppolo. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And the 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here we go, here and the ball go. smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Again, they'll throw with Garoppolo. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Kendrick Bourne, the intended receiver, but now it's third and goal. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. Garoppolo now on third and goal. Toward the pylon, caught. And across the chalk, into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. A five-yard touchdown as his guys are on the board first here tonight. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter.
Robbie Gold on for the extra point. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's polished off by a touchdown for San Francisco. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. As the Rams set up shop for this next drive, Charles, let's talk about where they're at. They're 8-5. They're on a two-game winning streak. Big win in Week 14 against Seattle. And guess what the key to their victory was in Week 14? What's the key? What's the key? Going back to what they did last year, pressure with their defensive line and a heavy dose of Todd Gurley. Yeah, that pressure led to five sacks of Russell Wilson in the game, and Todd Gurley had 20-plus carries in the ball game, looking more like himself now. I wonder if the load management helped him to get him to this stage of the season, but they'll need everything down the stretch because not only do they have to win out, they're going to need some help along the way. They don't control their own destiny. At Dallas, at San Francisco, host Arizona, they're looking for some losses along the way, especially with Minnesota. Well, as we hit the home stretch of the regular season, just three weeks left, let's look at the slate for Week 15, some of the more intriguing games. Houston and Tennessee, that's a big one in the AFC South. Rams going to Dallas, Buffalo at Pittsburgh, that's a Sunday night game. And then Charles Davis, he'll be taking his parking to the frozen tundra. You've got Chicago at Green Bay this week. That's certainly do, and I'll take a heck of a lot more than just my parka. I will look like Bib the Michelin Man when it's all said and done. I will be bundled to the gills. A high of 27 expected at kickoff. But let's face it, how much fun will that be? Another historic Bears-Packers game and a game where the Bears have to have it and the Packers trying to hold on to the number two seed. Houston at Tennessee, so intriguing. Houston just got jumped on by Denver. But these teams will meet twice in the last three weeks. A division title may be at stake. The Rams have to win. Dallas can actually afford a loss. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure. Maybe that was for the best. As that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon. Thanks, man, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been a hard-fought battle to this point. 7-0 is the score. But neither offense really able to get on track. But let's not waste any time. We'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the second half. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting... 
sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. The first down run with Gurley, good for only about three. It's second down now. The tackle there by Richard Sherman. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Goff on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And a good result there as that'll get out of bounds and pin them back at their 10-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Now how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Here we go, here so we now go. second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Garoppolo going to hand this one to Carmen. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. From the gun on third, Garoppolo. And yeah, that is incomplete. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams that we've seen in this game? Would you say it's like a high-stakes chess match right now? Uh, chess is one way to go. Uh -huh. Yeah, I like it. Okay, the only reason I say that, you feel like they're contemplating their moves before actually making one, and none of them being done very confidently. Truth be told, I've never played chess, and I know that I'm not smart enough to play chess. Guys like you with your IQ, you can pull that off. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Malcolm Smith, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through, definitely goes to the defensive player. 
Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Now it's gone. And he's going to go down again. DeForest Buckner able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. before the quarter breaks. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Possibly a team. This is third and long. From the gun, here's gone. But he'll find his target. Woods, it's complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Johnny Hacker now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Taylor now returning it. He can't get him down. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Here we go, here From the go, here 34 we go. now, hey, here's hey. first and 10. Give me that ball, <laughs> and the drive starts with a handoff to Coleman. And able to get in there, and it's a first down, 49ers. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Here we go, so here it's we go. 49er Ready? football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. That's complete to his receiver, Pettis. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. 
The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. To throw is Garoppolo. That's complete. It's Kyle Juszczyk. And that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Handoff, Coleman, right side. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. He got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Down to a knee goes Garoppolo, and that ought to do it. Here we go, here we go. By 20! So the victory here for San Francisco, and not all W's are created equal, CD, and this one came in shutout fashion. Well, their offense certainly didn't need to do anything, right? They could take the day off, and they did, but the defense, they carried them in a big way. Yeah, look, the offense obviously stuffed to work on, but they did enough, and the defense carried the load. Well, you know what they say, it's always fun to work on things if it didn't go well in your game with a victory in your pocket, and that's what they've got going forward. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The 49ers get the win here at home as we say so long from Santa Clara.